Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We are here in The Hague in the Netherlands at the SDN NFV World Congress 2017 and I'm talking to an old friend, Diego Lopez, who is Head of Technology Exploration and Standards at Telefonica. Mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't seen you for almost eight or nine hours, Diego, but welcome back. I've got a few oh questions God. to put to you, and let's, let's start with this. It's five years since the first NFV white paper was released. In your opinion, where are we today in terms of the viability of the technology and the adoption by CSPs? Technology has demonstrated that it's fully viable, and there are already deployments. And one of the important things is that even since the technology was, I mean, the technology as we conceive, uh, originally conceived uh, NFV and uh, as we conceive it now, was not mature enough. People were trying to address it and claiming having implemented NFV even partially. Right now, there are deployments uh, that are, if not, I would say, 100% uh, compliant, uh, because this is something that is difficult to assess. Uh, they are they are very very close to what uh, to the to what NFV intended to to, uh, to do and what is uh, what is the uh, the goal of NFV. Um, recently, this morning, talking with uh, some colleagues, I uh, came to know that there are a couple of operators that are claiming and, and they are preparing announcements, etc., about uh, deployments that are fully compliant with the NFV specs. So. Uh, I think that we are in a, in that respect, we are in a very good position and I would say that NFV definitely is here to stay. The, uh, mostly in telecommunications, a generation for a technology to come to fruition is about 10 years, always has been. <laughs> um, this is five years and some people are saying, well, it's taking a long time to get to where we want to be. Do you think that's the case and is there any way of speeding things up or is it not necessary? I don't think it's necessary. Uh, even, even in some cases, what you remember yesterday, there was people that were uh, saying that uh, in this respect and another, another uh, virtualization aspect, we are going even too, far, too yes. fast. Um, well, we, we live in a time in which everything has to be immediate. <laughs> uh, I want it right here, right now. And whatever it is is not immediate seems to be uh, being too slow. Well, I, I can understand that for, for I mean, even for, for myself, since we started this five years ago, well, since I was hired by Telefonica six years ago to try to start this, uh, this stuff by that moment, um, well, since six years is uh, some time in your, in your lifetime, and you would like to, to see your baby brown and, and, and healthy and and, I don't know, doing, go, going to university, making money, <laughs> being happy. And, and Growing uh, up. Exactly. Yeah. But it's a, it's a natural process. I, I think that, uh, among other things, when we're talking telcos and, and telecommunication system, we're talking about things that are extremely sensitive. Society depends very much on this, and you have to be, well, a, apart, apart from market rules, apart from regulation, apart from anything else, there is a strong social responsibility in the, in, in the operation of these uh, infrastructures that you have to be, that makes us be, be more careful because what we're dealing uh, with are vital aspects of the, uh, of, for, for society right now. So it's taking time. We are going much faster than, than we originally uh, could expect. And I must say that the industry in that respect has been very agile. We have found that uh, industry, uh, um, sorry, standards bodies, uh, the, the open source communities, every, everyone around the, uh, the, uh, the technology has been adapting, being very, uh, uh, very flexible, agile, and I, I, I dare to say smart in, the, in, that, uh, in, this, uh, in this journey. So I think we're doing well, basically. Ultimately, of course, this transformation journey is about CSPs being able to deliver a better customer experience. So how are SDN and NFE going to help you to gain the best possible insight into the current and future needs of customers who, in the end, after all, will pay for all this? Basically, uh, what I foresee here is that with the software-based uh, networking, whatever, SDN, NFE, whatever comes after, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, one of the advantages is that you can merge what you're doing with what the uh, customer is doing to use the network. There is a possibility of exposing data about the network. There is a possibility of directly receiving what the customer is asking. Not, not necessarily even what the customer is saying, 
they are asking, but this is what they are actually asking in the network. You can analyze it, you can trace it, you can collect data about that, you can expose part of the data to the customer so the customer knows about the, the, the network and knows what is feasible or realistic and what is not. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, uh, the connection between the customer re uh, requests and what the network can, uh, can offer is much more direct, immediate, and, and, and what is more important even treat, uh, subject to, to, to be analyzed and, uh, and processed and discussed uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, auditive data. And this is very important for, the, for, the, for this purpose. As NFE does mature, and halfway through a 10 year cycle, whatever it may be, as you just mentioned, whatever comes next, well, we, we were hearing things about what might come next because suddenly there's a lot of focus on AI, on machine learning and automation, of course. What do you think those mean in the context of network transformation and how important are they going to be to it? I think in general, when we're talking about, uh, we're talking about, if you think about it, is we're talking about almost a, a continuum of solutions that are around the idea that once you have a infrastructure that is much more adaptable and you have a, a way that is uh, very flexible to deal with that infrastructure and you have the possibility of of uh, moving different pieces on top of the infrastructure freely, or well, if not freely in a much more agile way, then the, the next step is to integrate this infrastructure in a, in a closed control loop, very similar to what you, you can see in, in whatever the other controls in factories or in uh, transportation or, and all the like. Yep. So automation is a, is a natural consequence of this uh, uh, closed trans, uh, uh, control loop. And the idea precisely when you have a closed control loop, you can try to put as much uh, a, a, a controller that is, I mean, a controller, we're talking about <laughs> an automation controller. <laughs> we have to be careful about the term controller here. Yep. A controller that is smart enough to be as autonomous as possible. And that comes to AI and machine learning and all the like. I, I, well, actually, I made my PhD thesis. Some time ago, precisely on, on fuzzy logic, and it was a, a. By that moment, AI was a little bit not so in fashion, and mm -hmm. then we were trying to find another ways of going the same direction. And uh, I remember that one of the applications that we were using was things like um, self-parking cars, um, control of uh, chemical plants. Basically, the problem was uh, the problem of, of the control that a human expert could apply to a system. Right now, what we are thinking is precisely about bringing this to networking. The real problem here is simply that the uh, networks are much more complex and dynamic than probably other, other systems are. The number of variables is very high. Mm. Uh, we have many humans in the loop because at the, at the end, the networks are connecting humans and humans uh, tend to be, you know, difficult as a, for control theory, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and there are there are some effects that uh, from time to time are re really amazing in the sense that I some time uh, ago I, re I read a book and we were talking about the laser effect. It's yes. about that many people at this well many people many atoms at the same time emitting light in a consistent way makes something completely different. Laser light has nothing to do with the uh, it's light, but it's nothing to do with the uh, with the normal light. Sure. And what happens as in our experience with networking is that there are patterns in which, if they become coherent, the patterns that, uh, that uh, and the patterns that they influence in the network has nothing to do with, uh, with any other uh, normal patterns, so to say. So uh, challenges are, are very, uh, very uh, high when it comes to applying this uh, kind of autonomous systems uh, here. But well, there is a, corp a, a very uh, uh, big corpus of previous experience, and we believe that at least if not completely, uh, partially, that would be, become applicable. Anytime soon facilitated by this agile, plax, uh, plastic, elastic uh, uh, support. Diego, thank you for that. Um, let me ask you a, a quick fire question, or a couple of them. What has surprised you the most on the five-year journey into NFE so far? Frankly, it has been the, uh, how we were able to, to bring together a a diverse set of people that at the beginning came to the group with you know, different agendas, different goals, even different um, ways of understanding what we want to achieve. And in some cases, 
I had the feeling that some came, uh, well, with, even with the idea that to, to go in a completely different direction. And how fast we converge, how fast we managed to, to go in a, in a consistent direction, and how fast we were able to build a community of people with, again, different goals, different backgrounds, different whatever, but we, we, we build a community and now we have a sense of purpose. And what is more important, that includes not only people from the industry, not only researchers for academia, but even, and it's something, people that come from the, uh, even from the law enforcement uh, body. So we, we, we build a community out of so diverse uh, group of, of people that started with it. Thank you. If you could borrow the uh, well-guarded telecom TV time machine, which is kept in a cupboard in London, um, and change one thing over the past five years, what would it be? I, I, I would try, probably we started the, uh, to work, um, uh, I mean, from the very beginning, we separated working in a, in a set of uh, what initially were um, not so well-communicated uh, groups. It's, uh, it's helped us in, in, in reacting very fast. But on the, on the other hand, it has caused some uh, additional um, frictions that probably we should have evo uh, avoided by having studied all together, separating afterwards and, and getting together. So it would be probably the, the, the initial split was too, uh, uh, too hasty. This is something that I would change because probably would cut the, the time from five years to four. <laughs> I think you know predicting in this industry is hard enough, and looking more than a few months out is almost impossible. But given that we're probably halfway through this arc, ten-year arc, where, what's your not prediction, but how do you see NFV and SDN fitting into an automated network in the future? Well, I foresee something that we have uh, we have, or personally have tried to, to introduce a couple of times, which is. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I like because this was an idea that came to me once uh, discussing with one of my girls. Right. Because, uh, the idea of the dialectics in the network. Which is uh, the idea that what you need to do is precisely to collect the different uh, requests from the, uh, from the users as different uh, statements or theses yeah. and combine them with, uh, with something else that you have, that is the, uh, poli the policy that you apply to the network and the physical and logical limitations you have, and being able to combine them in a smart way. So the idea is that users will be able to express this in something that is close to natural language. Network, may, network admins can uh, uh, express their policies in close to natural language, and the system will be smart enough to combine them and to bring or, or to address these requirements and those policies in the uh, ideal way according to the uh, 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 available resources and the, uh, and the agreements and the contracts and the SLAs. So I would say a smart dialectical network. Not heard that before. Very, very interesting. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope it comes to pass. Diego Lopez, as usual, thank you very much. Thank you.